Have you ever wondered how these massive machines move their heavy steel tracks with such precision and power? The secret lies in the incredible force of hydraulics. Today, let's break down how hydraulics power the tracks of machines like excavators, bulldozers, blast hole drills and other mining and construction jumbos. It all starts with the heart of the machine, a diesel engine or an electric motor. The engine or motor generates enough power to run compressor and hydraulic pumps. Normally, compressor requirement plays major role in selection of engine. However, the hydraulic pumps also consume significant amount of power. For example, a pump suppling hydraulic fluid to a tram motor may consume about 200 horsepower or 150 kilowatt. Usually, engine power is transmitted to pumps through a gearbox. But why gearbox is needed? In diesel engines, especially in heavy machinery, engine speed or RPM reaches low idle when the engine is running but not under load and at its minimum operational speed. It's essentially the slowest speed at which the engine can run smoothly without stalling. For example, when an excavator is powered on but not moving or using its hydraulics, it will often drop to low idle to conserve fuel until the operator engages the controls again. Typical range of low idle speed is around 600 to 800 revolutions per minute for most heavy-duty diesel engines. For most construction and industrial equipment like excavators, bulldozers, cranes and loaders, the diesel engines are high speed and typically operate in the range of 1,500 to 2,200 revolutions per minute under load, with idle speeds around 600 to 800 revolutions per minute. On the other hand, hydraulic pumps work best at specific speeds. For example, an axial piston pump with 120 cc runs at 2,300 revolutions per minute at high idle and 1,500 revolutions per minute at low idle. If we connect the pump directly to engine at max engine speed, it may get damaged. Again, at engine idle speed, the pumps won't get sufficient RPM to function as required, which may lead to poor hydraulic performance. This is the reason we need a gearbox to connect pumps with engine. A gearbox allows the engine to run at its optimal speed while adjusting the pump speed to match system requirements. Gearboxes can also increase torque delivered to the pump, especially during startup or heavy load conditions. This is crucial when the pump needs high torque at low speeds, which the engine alone may not provide efficiently. Some gearboxes allow reversing the direction of rotation, which can be useful for certain pump configurations or dual function systems. In multi-pump systems, a gearbox can help distribute power from the engine to multiple pumps with different speed and torque requirements. Gearboxes can include clutches or power takeoffs PTOs, to engage disengage pumps as needed, improving fuel efficiency and reducing wear. That's all about gearbox. Now let's go to the hydraulic pump supplying hydraulic fluid from tank to track motors. Normally, variable displacement axial piston pumps are used for track hydraulic fluid supply. These pumps can handle the high pressures required to move heavy tracks. These pumps allow for variable flow rates depending on the operator's input and load demand. Whenever full flow isn't needed, pump adjusts displacement to reduce energy loss. Now let's have a quick look into the working principle of these pumps. An axial piston pump consists of multiple pistons arranged in parallel cylinders around a central rotating shaft. At one end, a swash plate is connected to the pistons. As the shaft rotates, the angle of the swash plate causes the pistons to reciprocate, moving in and out of their cylinders. At the opposite end, a rotary valve or valve plate alternately connects each cylinder to the inlet and outlet ports, enabling fluid intake and discharge. The displacement of the pump is controlled by adjusting the swash plate angle. When the swash plate is perpendicular to the shaft, the pistons do not move, resulting in zero flow. As the angle increases, the stroke length of the pistons increases, pumping a greater volume of fluid. Some pumps allow the swash plate to tilt in both directions, enabling bidirectional flow without reversing the shaft rotation. There are multiple sensors who provide data to control system for efficient working of whole system. Pressure sensor measures, outlet pressure to monitor load and protect against overpressure. Temperature sensor monitors hydraulic fluid temperature to prevent overheating. Displacement sensor detects swash plate angle to determine pump displacement. Speed sensors measure pump shaft speed often via magnetic pickup or hall effect sensor. Flow sensor is optional which measures actual hydraulic flow rate for diagnostics. Electronic control unit or ECU is the central processor that receives sensor data and adjusts pump displacement or swash plate angle. It interfaces with the machine's CAN bus or proprietary control network. Proportional solenoid valves are electrically controlled valves that adjust the swashplate angle to vary pump displacement. 
they are controlled by the ECU based on operator input and sensor feedback. As the pump spins they push hydraulic fluid through thick hoses to the track motors, it decides where the hydraulic fluid goes, either to the left or right track motor, allowing the machine to move forward, backward, or turn with precision. But it doesn't stop there. The control valve also manages how much fluid reaches each motor. This controls the speed of the tracks. Want to turn? The valve sends more flow to one side and less to the other, enabling smooth steering or even pivot turns. In the neutral position, the valve blocks fluid flow entirely. The tracks stop moving, but the pump keeps running, perfect for idling or holding position on a slope. And for safety? Many control valves come with load holding and anti-cavitation features to prevent unintended movement and protect the system under pressure. In short, the control valve is what makes hydraulic track drive systems both powerful and precise. Here is how it works together. Operator moves joystick, ECU receives signal, ECU commands solenoid valve to adjust swashplate angle, sensors feedback pressure, temperature and displacement. ECU fine-tunes pump output to match demand and protect the system. From pumps the hydraulic fluid enters the hoses and hard pipes. The hydraulic hoses operate at very high pressures because they need to deliver enough force to move massive machines over rough terrain. In extreme heavy mining equipment, this pressure may reach up to 400 bars or 5,800 psi. High pressure fluid flows from the pump through reinforced hoses to the track motors. Return hoses handle lower pressure but still often more than 50 to 100 bars. Pressure spikes can happen when changing direction, climbing obstacles, or braking suddenly. This is why burst pressure ratings of hoses are usually 4x working pressure. The hoses and track drives often have protective sheaths or guards to prevent damage from debris, rocks, or track movement. When the operator moves the joystick or pedal, control valves direct this high-pressure oil to either the left or right track or both depending on the desired movement. At each track, the hydraulic oil enters an axial piston motor. Here, fluid pressure pushes pistons against a slanted plate, converting the oil's energy into rotary motion. The rotating shaft of the motor is connected to a planetary gearbox or final drive. This gearbox multiplies torque and reduces speed, making it suitable for heavy-duty track movement. The output of the gearbox is connected to the sprocket, which engages with the track links. As the sprocket turns, it pulls the track along, propelling the machine forward or backward. By changing oil flow and pressure, the operator can make the machine go forward, backward, or spin on the spot and by adjusting how much oil the pump delivers, the machine can crawl slowly with high torque or travel faster across the job site. But that's not all. Hydraulic track systems also have built-in brakes that engage automatically if oil pressure is lost, making sure the machine stays safely in place. And check valves prevent unwanted track movement. If you enjoyed this deep dive into hydraulic technology, don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos on heavy machinery 